Have you ever taken a photo and wondered, why is my photo so dark or why is my photo so bright? Even though your camera said the exposure was where it needed to be, well, your camera has this handy tool that can address these problems and that is called a histogram. Friends, welcome back to yet another Shoot Happens. I'm Alex and thanks so much for tuning in. If you're new here, well, this series is for beginner photographers who want to gain new skills and improve the quality of their images. Now that being the case, we'll make sure to hit that like button down below and hit the subscribe button so we get to see more of one another. That way, well, you don't miss any quick tips that will make a difference in your photography. Today, as the title gave it away, we're gonna be talking about histograms, what they are, why do they matter, and how you can use them to take control of your exposures and create better photos. Think of a Histogram as your camera's way of giving you a peek behind the curtain, showing you exactly how your image data is distributed from shadows to highlights. Understanding this little graph can be an absolute game changer to say the least. Now, let's take a step back. What exactly is a histogram? Well, simply put, it's a graph that shows you the brightness levels on your photo. The left side, well, this represents shadows and dark tones. On the right side, well, this represents highlights and bright tones. Right in the middle, of course, is the midtones. By checking your histogram, you can immediately see if your image is underexposed or overexposed or just perfect, it's well balanced. Even if the preview on your screen looks misleading due to lighting conditions, using a histogram has absolute lots of benefits. First, it's gonna help you catch problems you might not notice on your LCD preview, especially in tricky lighting. Second, it allows you to expose for the scene more accurately, giving you much more detail in your shadows and highlights. And third, well, it teaches you how to make creative decisions. Like when to intentionally clip the shadows for a moody effect or let highlights blow out for a little bit more of a dramatic scene. Here's how to read it in a real world scenario. Imagine you're shooting an absolutely amazing sunset. The screen might make the sky look perfectly exposed, but the histogram might show a spike on the right indicating overexposed highlights. Now you can then adjust the exposure to preserve those bright details. Conversely, well, photographing a dark alley might show a histogram bunched over to the left, which signals, as you might have guessed it, it is underexposed. Now, this might prompt you to open up your aperture or increase your ISO to increase overall brightness of the image. See, histograms aren't just for overall brightness, though. They can also help you with the color and the luminosity. Many cameras, matter of fact, allow you to view separate RGB histograms showing red, green, and blue channel distribution. Now, this can be really useful when you want to make sure that your colors are balanced or avoid color clipping in bright highlights. And one thing to remember is this here, as many other fundamentals in photography or, you know, things relating to photography, you know, a histogram it, it's, it's just a guide, it's not rules. Sometimes bunched up on the right-hand side histogram in a high key image is, is exactly what you want. Or a bunched up left histogram in a moody black and white photo is absolutely what the doctor ordered. The goal is to use histogram to make intentional choices rather than blindly trusting your camera's meter. Here are a few practical tips. You're gonna to wanna to check your histogram after taking a shot, especially in tricky lighting. Learn how to adjust the exposure using aperture, shutter speed, and ISO to move the histogram where you want it. Now, on a side, well, if you're not sure how to adjust exposure, check out my other Shoot Happen videos to get a crash course on that. Also, as you've heard me echo over and over again over the years, get out there, experiment, practice. Oh my goodness, get out there and practice. Friends, that's going to be your best tool to transitioning from a beginner to an intermediate to an advanced photographer. Take the same scene with different exposures and see how the histogram changes. You're gonna quickly see for yourself and start connecting what the graph shows to what appears in your final image. So the next time you're, it's time to go shooting, don't just glance at your LCD and hope for the best. Open up the histogram and give yourself the data-driven advantage and you're gonna see for yourself. Understanding histogram helps you capture the image you actually want. So avoid surprises in post-processing, that's never fun, and become more confident in your exposure decisions. Not bad, right? So again, going back to get out there, experiment, 
practice. That is going to be your best friend here. Now, if you have additional questions about histogram exposures or how to read them in different situations, friends, go down below. Leave a comment down below. I'm always happy to help. And if you enjoyed this episode, well, be sure to check out my other Shoot Happen videos for more beginner-friendly tips that help you take your photography to that next level. As always, thanks for a few minutes of your time. Thanks for watching. Remember, a histogram, well, isn't just a graph. It's your secret weapon for better photos. All right, friends, that's going to be it for me. Grab your camera, get out there, and practice using your histogram. Your photos are going to thank you for it at the end of the day. With that said, I'm going to be shutting up my cameras, and you get out there and take your best shot.